Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we're going to be back in the TBM 930 continuing with our tutorial series and uh, primary focus for today is customization of the MFD and PFD um, the multifunction display and primary flight display it's got a bunch of different uh, customization options that you can do as far as setting it up the way you like and the nice thing about the TBM and the way it's built out especially with the modifications to the G3000 um, is that you are able to or it, it retains that information between flights. So, you know, however you set it up today, you know, you close the sim down a couple days later, your settings will still be there. Um, so it's really handy. Um, I know it's the case with for most of the settings. I'm not 100% sure on all of them, but most of them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump into the cockpit. We'll get the aircraft started up and then uh, take a look at some customization. All right, so in the seat, we're going to do a real fast uh, startup here, sort of burn through it. Get our battery on, our generator on, okay. ignition over to on, auxiliary boost pumps to on, fuel selection set to manual, go ahead and throw those nav lights on, the pulse light on, come downstairs for a second, bring up the MFD, clear the yoke, air conditioning off, hot air flow down to the floorboard, quick lights test on the gear, verify the gear is down, lights test on the... Uh, the dash panel all looks good and let's go ahead and get her started so from here oh let's turn our oxygen on too grab that starter switch give it a big one and a big two firing up Over 13 on the NG 13 is good coming to low idle Looking for 52% on the NG. ITT's good. And there's our 52. Let's go into flight idle. Let's go ahead and clear our master caution. Bring our pitot heat on, pitot heats on. Set our pressurization to max diff or auto. Engine stabilized. Fuel selection go over to auto. Auxiliary boost pumps to auto. Autopilot trim set to on. And we are good to go. And uh, let's go ahead and bring our air conditioning on it's gonna get hot up in here okay so let's go ahead and talk about some of the settings here now I'm gonna stay away from these PFD settings here for the moment as well as the PFD map settings and it's because 90% of the settings that you'll see here can be controlled down here okay so let's just start with the PFD home page as you can see we are here PFD home nav source notice that it's changing our nav source up here Okay, cycling between GPS and the two VORs. Bearing information, again, down over here. Very quickly turn on and off. Coming down, and that's for bearing one and bearing two. Speed bugs. We have our rotation speed. Best climb uh, angle, best climb speed. And uh, our approach speed. You can turn these bugs on or turn them off however you choose to do so. You can also change them if you choose so. So for example, we could set this if we wanted to climb at, I don't know, 110 knots. Throw an enter in there, throw that to 110. And notice that you get an icon indicating that this number was edited. We'll throw it back to 115. And we can just restore all defaults. All right, just hit the back menu. Timers. Um, pretty simple plan here. Click up here, select what you want. If we wanted two minutes, throw enter. We could tell it to count up or count down. Start, reset, okay, however you want to do that. Minimums, just like we saw before. So I use the standard 200 feet, okay, and that will populate the minimums when necessary and call them out. 
Now let's take a look at the PFD map settings. Okay, so this is going to be the inset map. All right, so we can turn the inset map on. Comes up here. Now from here we can select the terrain if you want absolute or relative. Okay, so we can still see the runways and things like that. Or if you want, you can turn the terrain off. You set the distance at which you want it to be displayed. Aviation, you can turn your airways off, airports, VOR, and NDBs. Okay, however you want to do that, depending on the type of flight you're doing, you may want to just stick to the VORs and NDB stations. So full customization of what displays on the map. Heading orientation, you can have it track up always. Or we can set it to north is always up. Notice that we turned. So here's north, but the aircraft is actually facing west. I personally prefer track up. Map sinks. This will sync this map and... Oop. <laughs> that was different. It will sync the maps together, making sure they're all displaying the same information and laid out the same way. Map detail. This is sort of similar to what we were just doing, but you can sort of think of it as an automatic declutter. You can bring it all the way down. It takes only the critical information. Bring it back up. You get much more. Land, states, and provinces, cities. You can turn all these on. Settings, large cities, medium cities, small cities. On the states, what distance you want to show that information on. Other, we have north, above, and then set your thousand nautical miles, whatever distance you want that to take place. Your track vectors, your fuel range and, for, and reserves, range to altitude. You can have all that populate on your map. We don't have an altitude configured, so nothing's going to be displayed yet. You can have your weather data. And now go to the PFD settings, and this is where you can get into some of the customization. So, honestly, because I use the MFD, for example, I turn the inset map off. Like I just I like to have this as clear as possible. So if we come back over to PFD settings, AOA, your angle of attack, you can turn that on or have it set to automatically come on. And I believe it automatically come on during your approach. I don't worry about that. Your terrain. This is your synthetic terrain. Notice that now it looks like a concrete parking lot versus before you just get that brown and blue from default. I like the synthetic terrain. Your wind options. So you have multiple different wind options as far as how wind is displayed, whether you just get the direction, direction speed, direction speed heading, etc. Um, or bearing against the aircraft. Um, I'd have to go back and look. I don't remember which one it is, but I know it's wind three that I like. Your barometric altitude settings, um, so if you want inches or uh, hectopascals, set that there. All right, and that pretty much covers the PFD for now. Now, you can control a lot of the same information here just by giving a quick click. But if we go to PFD settings, notice there's your bearing one, there's your bearing two. Okay, altitude or attitude overlays, there's your synthetic terrain. You can turn it off as well. So a lot of the same functionality you can find here without having to navigate near as many menus. There's our wind, there's our AOA, altitude units. So this just makes it a lot easier by using the center console than um, using the primary display. But you can use the flight display if need be. It's got all the same information. It's just laid out a little bit cleaner over here in my opinion. So now let's move on to the MFD. MFD, a lot of the same features really. Um, very similar customizations. You have your map settings again. So just like what we saw before. You can turn the terrain on or off if we choose. Set it to absolute or relative. All right, again, set your distance for your weather data. Tracking up, map sync again. Remember I told you what that does? Syncs the two, the inset map and this map together. Your map detail, just like we saw before, it's just a declutter option. You can scale it down and that makes it a little bit easier than manually going through and selecting these and what you want, what you're looking for, right? So it's just a, it's a faster way to do it, but not as much customization. All right, uh, your weather, you have two different weather modes, so we can activate the weather once, then click it again. And then we have weather radar settings, and we can turn the weather radar on, display mode, and turn weather. Scan mode, you can do horizontal or vertical. Okay, so there's 60,000 feet down to a negative 60,000 feet, keep in mind we're on ground level. All right, 
So you may change that based on, you know, if you're trying to avoid weather based on altitude, you'd want to go vertical. If you want to avoid weather based on your horizontal position, you know, left or right, um, then obviously you'd want to use the horizontal mode. Let's turn the radar off so that way we're not frying anybody's brain. And you get all these informations here. Not everything is obviously current yet, or gosh, I keep wanting to use my mouse wheel. Um, if you notice, the mouse wheel does work, but the problem is obviously it's bound to the zoom too, so... Um, you just grab your taskbar here and or scroll bar and move it. Turn your bearing lines on and off if you choose, however you want. So there's plenty of customization there, which is cool. Coming back again. Let's go ahead and go to the map. And you can see it just toggles it back and forth. Whether you want rad weather radar or map, that's a very quick fix. Your direct to, um, we'll go over this later when we get into flight planning, but this is just a quick way to enter the direct location so if we wanted to go to a direct waypoint um, we could program that, program that in um, now we don't have any flight or waypoints programmed in so we can't do that yet flight planning and procedures so flight plan is obviously going to be all of your waypoints your starting location uh, destination location your procedures are going to be your stars and SIDS okay and approaches and we'll go over that more when we do the, the flight planning tutorial Aircraft systems, this one just has lighting config, but it's really nice. So if we back this out a little bit, it adjusts everything. If you watch, everything is getting dimmer. Or you can just grab it. So this is really handy during night flights. And this is one of those settings I can guarantee you um, is remembered in the next time you fly. This is something I wish that... Uh, fly-by-wire would get on the uh, A320 is a way to have it store your, your uh, light configuration. I think that'd be really awesome. Um, not that that plane isn't awesome enough. I am not complaining in any way, shape, or form. I love that aircraft. That's uh, why, why I joined the QA team. Um, let's see here. Utilities. And this is setup. Avionics settings. Again, so what this allows you to do is to edit these fields here. Okay, now obviously there's going to be a lot more it looks like coming. We have system, units, alerts, audio. Those aren't functioning yet, but what we can do is, let's just pick one of these here. Um, if we wanted uh, estimated time of arrival, okay, we can click that. Notice we have an estimated time of arrival now. Now I do like having the ground speed there, so I'm going to put that back. Ah! Where'd you go? Uh-oh. Did I ruin it? That's not good. Oh, I have to click it. <laughs> I'm retarded. I'm retarded. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know why my brain just like stopped functioning there. Anyway, so we can put it back to ground speed. So you can configure this with the information that you like, which is really handy. That's really awesome. Um, backing up one more time here. Back up again. Back up again. Takes us back to the first menu here. We already talked about the speed bugs. It's going to be the same as what we saw before. You know, you can have your uh, the same information that we talked about previously, so I'm not going to go over that again. Waypoint information. Right now, we only have the airports, but you can type in a specific airport, select it, and give you your frequencies and your runway information, which is nice. Um, and then, obviously, your nearest. And this is where it gets handy. So we can go nearest VOR, okay? And then we can program it and automatically tune it, which is really handy. So if we could tune it, we could go to Nav 1 Active or Standby. So we could set it to the Active. And now the Nav 1 Activation, so we can go VOR. And we are tuned to that VOR station that we just selected. See, 116.5, 116.5. So again, another really handy feature. Um, this is probably the best that I've seen in all the aircraft. It's really nice when doing, uh, if you're doing any VOR, or VOR, VFR flying in the TBM, which I do occasion. This is fun. I'm sorry, it's just a fun plane to fly. <laughs> it's like a race car in the air. Um, anyways, it's a lot of fun to be able to quickly navigate between the two. So it's pretty awesome. And again, you have your NDB stations and your, um, or your intersections. Let me back that up here. Sorry, I had somebody come into the room. Um, and then finally, the last really handy piece about this is this half and half window. Okay, so we can bring up the maps and you can see currently we have this map or the white map is selected. We can change that to weather. Now I haven't figured out and I don't know if it's available yet. It may not be active yet. But I haven't figured out how to change, how to swap between the two screens. So I don't know if that's something that's an option. 
Because nothing I do... Oh, there it is right there. I could have sworn. You know what? I must have been hitting the big one. So there you guys go. We learned something together. So use the top knob. I must have had my mouse down too far. Use the top mod... Mod? <laughs> top knob. And you can cycle between which screen is doing what. And so from here, we could also, you know, bring up the flight plan. Oh, that's a no. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that we would put on the screen. I guess it would only be weather and and map for now. So it's pretty simple, I guess. But this would actually be handy. You know, if we want to do something like that, it would apply. Weather radar is on. We're going to see some weather here. If we're trying to clear it by altitude, we can see it over here and just our altitude. Kind of cool. Anyway, and then just give that full screen a tap, turn off. I'm really glad I learned that. That's pretty awesome. But uh, that is pretty much it for customization of the MFD and PFDs. But play around with it a, guy, a bit, guys. Figure out what you like having on your screens, what you don't. Um, your bearing informations that we saw previously. So if we come back and play, you know, these guys here. These are going to be your in, rel in relationship to your NAV1 and NAV2. Okay, um, in this case, we can see that we have NAV1 selected. So NAV1, if we tap that again, takes us to NAV2 or maybe the GPS on one and VOR on another or however you wanted to do it. All right, but uh, play around with it. Set it up the way you like. You'd be surprised how much that actually makes the flight experience better, being able to customize a lot of this stuff, especially the lighting, as silly as that sounds. Some of these screens are super bright at night. But uh, anyway... That's pretty much all I have for you guys today for this course. The next one, we're going to get into flight planning and, and uh, prepping the aircraft for takeoff. So I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, folks.